Let's do this example on a thermodynamic process. A 2,000 cubic centimeter container holds 0, 0.10 moles of helium gas at 300 degrees Celsius. How much work must be done to compress the gas to 1,000 cubic centimeters at A, constant pressure, and B, constant temperature? Let's begin by visualizing the scenario. Suppose we have a container of a certain volume. We'll say the, it's the initial volume. And I'm drawing kind of like a piston here. So later, when we evolve to a lower volume, I could illustrate that the volume inside the cylinder of the gas has decreased by just showing my cylinder head at a lower position. I will label the state of the cylinder initially uncompressed. I will label it as state A. In state A, we're at volume V sub A. We have a number of moles in. We're at temperature T sub A. All of these are given in the problem. Now, the cylinder compresses the gas. I'm going to just illustrate the gas with a certain color so I know something is inside. And the cylinder compresses the gas. So after the piston compresses the gas, we're in a new state, which I'll call state B. State B, we have volume B. And I notice that the volume of B is going to be half of the volume at A because we compressed from 2,000 cubic centimeters to 1,000 cubic centimeters. We're, we also still have the same number of moles in. And the new temperature, well, we don't know. So I'll just call this T sub B. And I should remember that we also have two additional or one additional thermodynamic state variable, that's pressure. So we have pressure at point B. And I'm going to go back and label pressure at point A for my state A. So the thermodynamic state variables we have is volume in state A. And we said that is 2,000 cubic centimeters. We have the number of moles, which remains constant for this process. We have the temperature in point A, which is 300 degrees Celsius. We're going to have to convert that to Kelvin later. And then we have pressure at point A, which is unknown. Now, even though the problem didn't specify a pressure at point A, because pressure is a thermodynamic state variable, and because we are dealing with the gas, it's important for us to indicate what we know about it and what we don't know. It just gives us more information. And then for state B, we had the volume in state B, which we know it compressed down to half of the volume at state A which was just 1,000 cubic centimeters. The number of moles remains the same. Temperature at point B, which is unknown, but that's going to depend on the process. We also have pressure at point B, which we don't know that as well. Now, given this information, our task is to determine how much work must be done to compress the gas, basically taking the gas from state A to state B. Now, I'm going to turn to another diagram to help us illustrate this. 
This diagram is a PV diagram, which is useful for illustrating thermodynamic processes. In a PV diagram, pressure is on the vertical axis, volume is on the horizontal axis. The gas starts in state A. State A has a particular value of the volume, VA. So I will label this point A. For part A, we compress the gas isobarically until it arrives at state B. So this thermodynamic process is represented by a horizontal diagram in our PV diagram. So I'm labeling that second point state B. Now we are to find the work done to compress the gas. So if we are compressing the gas, we know that's going to be positive work. Now remember, the work done on the gas is equal to negative the area between the curve in the PV diagram and the horizontal axis. So essentially, we all we have to do is calculate this area right here for this isobaric process. So this means that the work done is equal to minus the pressure times the change of volume for isobaric processes. So the work done from A to B is equal to minus the pressure at point A, which is the same as the pressure at point B because this is an isobaric process, times the change of volume. So that's the volume at point B minus the volume at point A. Now we don't know the pressure at point A, but we do know pressure is a state variable. And our equation of state for a ideal gas is the product of pressure and volume is equal to the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature at that particular state. So rearranging this, we have an expression for pressure is equal to the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume at that state. So the expression we have for the work done from A to B, I'll call that equation one. This expression for pressure, I'll call equation two. And what we're going to do is we're going to just put our expression for pressure directly into our expression for work. When we do that, that's the work done from A to B is equal to the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume at that state times the uh, change in volume, which is the volume at point B minus the volume at point A. And let's not forget the minus sign in front. So to make our work algebraically a little bit simpler and keeping in the spirit of solving for things in terms of variables, I will rewrite the volume in state B as one half the volume of state A minus the volume of state A. So this algebraically cleans things up for us a little bit by recognizing that we could cancel out the volume in state A. And now we have the work done from A to B is equal to minus N R T times minus one half. And when we see a minus times a minus is a positive. So now let's plug in numbers. We have the work done from A to B is equal to one half 
times the number of moles, which is 0 0.10 moles, times the gas constant, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, times the temperature. The temperature is given as 300 degrees Celsius, but we are going to convert that to Kelvin by adding a 273.15 Kelvin to that. Okay, and when we plug this into our calculator, we end up with 240 joules of work is done during the isobaric process. Now let's do a reality check. So we got positive work. What if the work was negative? The thing is, it's really easy to look, lose track of signs with these types of problems. So let's just go back and refer to our picture to see if we would expect positive work or negative work for our final answer. So from our PV diagram, we see it's a thermodynamic contraction. If we were to calculate just the area under the curve, absolute value of that, you know, we would get a positive area. But since our function is progressing from larger values of volume to smaller values of volume, that would imply that the environment is compressing the gas. So the environment is doing positive work on the gas. So since the environment is doing positive work on the gas, I would expect that this result would be a positive work. Now that makes sense mathematically because as we go from state A to state B, we are progressing from larger values of volume to smaller values of volume, which means that work done, just the area under the curve, the signed area in the curve, would be negative. And since the work done by the environment on a gas is opposite that signed area, we should have a positive value. Now we accounted for that positive value basically when we started off with our definition of work and then we ended up with a negative sign in front and the change of volume is negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. So we could feel good about our answer.